of this uh, Neumann Poincare operator and the uh, generalized polarization tensor as a uh, as a tool to represent the shapes. Now let's talk about some inverse problems. Okay, so inverse problem is uh, so we have the conductivity equation, and then this is a Neumann data. So physically, it's a current. So. So we have a body and the sigma x is a conductivity distribution and then you apply current here. Apply current here to our body. Okay. And then we measure measure this voltage on the boundary. Okay, the voltage. Okay, that's the voltage. So we apply current and then measure the voltage on the boundary. And then using this information, we want to determine the conductivity distribution. Okay, this is a, so uh, this is a current and this is voltage. <laughs> current and voltage, and so this is called the current to voltage map, or mathematically it is called the Neumann to Dirichlet map. So using this Neumann to Dirichlet map, uh, determine this conductivity. This is called the electrical impedance tomography problem, or Calderon problem. Mathematics community say it is a Calderon problem because Calderon was the first person <coughs> who ra posed this problem. Uh, I didn't write the, some references, but the uniqueness, so determine problem is determine conductivity distribution from this map. Okay. This is a Neumann to Dirichlet map. And the uniqueness was proved Proved by Sylvester Ullman first. <coughs> and then Nachman. And recently, it's a 2006. Is it right the 2006? This is uh, Astala. Paribarit. This is a three-dimensional. This is two-dimensional with uh, some assumption on the smoothness. And this is uh, general, two-dimensional results. Okay. Uh, and the three-dimensional, I mean, for the loft conductivity, the three-dimensional loft conductivity case is still open. Uh, at, I would like to mention all these papers were published in annals. So <laughs> these are <laughs> important questions. So three-dimensional love conductivity is still open, but this uh, it seems a hard question. And the limit, because uh, there are many students, let me mention one uh, completely open problem. No result, <laughs> I mean, one problem which has no result at all. One problem is this, this operator, this operator is, uh, say, lambda, Neumann to Dirichlet map, Map is uh, uh, on the boundary. This is boundary only. Huh? Map is from minus one half to minus one half. Okay. Then this is called the range problem. is uh, characterized uh, 
Guten Morgen, mein Tür. Guten Morgen, Herr. Corresponding to certain conductivity among uh, bounded operator. On from H minus one half. Maybe it's not so clear to what the problem is. So I have the somebody gave me. I, mean I have the operator, bounded operator from H minus one half to H one half. Is this Neumann to Dirichlet map or not? Okay. Is there is there a conductivity distribution which gives you I mean, which, which I mean, conductivity such that this Neumann to Dirichlet map corresponding to this conductivity distribution is the given operator? Nothing. <laughs> no. Okay. As far as I know. <laughs> okay. But the, the, this is not a, the, the, I mean, in, in, this is mathematical problem. In a sense that the, this is too general. Yeah. General conductive, to, you know, to, to, to find the general conduct. This is a general conductivity. It's too, too, too general. So, I'm going to. Okay. Now, we are going to restrict ourselves uh, to finding this sigma is uh, too general. So, instead of finding this, I'm going to. So, there is anomaly inside. This is a homogeneous space, and there is an anomaly. Then, can you detect it? Okay. Now, so sigma con conductivity is background one is conductivity one, and uh, anomaly has conductivity k. Okay. So this one has k. And this one is one. So now the problem is to reconstruct the inclusion or anomaly from the Dirichlet Neumann map. Okay? And the uniqueness was proved by Viktor Isakov in 88. But this problem is still ill posed and the reconstruction is unstable. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going so to. The uniqueness means the uniqueness among that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. So, given a domain, I mean, if the, 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 there are two different inclusions, then they produce different Dirichlet to normal map. Okay. If the Dirichlet to normal maps are the same, then these two domains must be. The same ones. Okay. Now, I'm going to assume further. Okay. Suppose, suppo uh, suppose the inclusion inclusion is small ones, not just the general one. Suppose my inclusion is very small. Okay, so we can we can write the, the inclusion in this way. B is a reference domain. I'm going to scale it. Delta is a small parameter, which represents the diameter of the inclusion, and then translate it. So Z represents the location, and the delta is a diameter size of the inclusion. Okay. Then, what can you say? Then the solution, solution of the problem, because this is a di the di diameter, of, I mean, size of this inclusion is small, 
you can make an asymptotic expansion as, as a, the, the diameter goes to zero. And the asymptotic expansion is the leading order term, which is a solution without the inclusion. And uh, when I, the, the last, last time the, we discussed about the polarization tensor, it is uh, the gradient of the background solution and the polariz polarized and expanded out. Like this. We, can, we, we can expect something like that is true. Okay. Now, the correct formula is instead of this uh, the fundamental solution, correct formula is this one. Background solution, polarization tensor, and then Neumann function. Now, what was the problem? The problem is to dete detect, detect the location or the inclusion in terms of this data, right? Data on the boundary. But this data contains a lot of information. Use, I mean, a lot of useful or useless or so this formula says that the, we want to use this data to reconstruct the, the, the inclusion. But instead of using this data, this is a good approximation of the data, right? And we know this one. So which means that we, we can, we can, I mean, we can find this quantity. But what is this quantity? This quantity look at this quantity. Use x is on the boundary, z is the location, right? So z is, I mean, we can, using this data, we can determine the point z, the location of the anomaly, and what? The polarization tensor. But the polarization tensor has an information about equivalent ellipse, right? Okay, so. This is the result of the reconstruction. The, what we want to detect is the, the anomaly consists of the three components. And the, using this boundary data, we reconstruct this location and the equivalent ellipse. So this dotted line is the location, it is uh, detected, right? And the dotted line is polarization test, is equivalent ellipse, okay? So by this approximation, asymptotic method, we can detect kind of overall properties, like a size. Okay. Uh, this is just a, if the, because uh, here, in this, uh, in this uh, asymptotic expansion, Neumann function, it is hard to find the Neumann function for the general shape. But uh, this kind of preconditioning, if you apply this uh, Neumann Poincare operator, then there is a special relation between Neumann function and the fundamental solution. And so the, the, the formula becomes like this. Where, where is it? This should be gamma. Okay. This should be gamma. So instead of Neumann function, you can use fundamental solution, which is explicit. Okay. All right. And let me, let me just uh, mention one paper by Amari, Boulier, and Garnier. Uh, they, they modeled the uh, electrical fish. It's, uh, the electrical fish is blind. He, 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 the, the, this fish doesn't see anything. He doesn't have the eye. And he, he generates, the, the fish generates the, the electrical field and then sends this electrical field to catch, I mean, to see, to see things. And in, in this, uh, in, in this uh, uh, paper, they model this uh, electrical fish, and uh, the fish detect uh, GPT. I'm not sure whether he really detects GPT, but there's some kind of those things. And,
discussion. Okay. So this is a uh, This was a Neumann Poincare operator, and it has a spectral resolution. And so, if you take a inverse of this operator, this is a ice component of the normal vector. Then we have this form, and the polarization tensor is a integration of the this guy against this function y j. Then if you plug in this one to this formula, then we have this integration. Now, you see, this is a... So, there is a measure. And, okay. There is a measure, but uh, if the domain is domain is uh, smooth enough, then this measure is just a singular measure. It has a discrete, uh, I mean, discrete, dis discrete spectrum. So it is a singular measure. And the uh, polarization tensor takes this form. But uh, one question, one, one interesting question is, so this is kind of the, uh, this is a measure. So Radon Nicodem theorem says that uh, uh, it can be decomposed into a uh, singular measure plus absolutely continuous measure. And if domain is uh, uh, domain is uh, uh, smooth, then on the absolute continuous part is zero. Only a singular part exists. Now, is there any any domain? I mean. Should, should have corners, any domain such that the absolute continuous part is non-zero. I don't have any example. Nothing. Okay. And another question, int a very interesting question is, uh, this is uh, related, this now the, the people, uh, electrical impedance tomography use, start to use uh, complex conductivities because uh, it, the, the, this complex conductivity changes, conductivity changes depending on the frequencies. So they are looking at the complex conductivity, which means that uh, we, can, we can detect this uh, polarization tensor for certain se sequence of the complex numbers. Now, use, use this data, can you recon reconstruct omega domain? Which means, okay, So, so polarization tensor is a, uh, this is holomorphic. This is a holomorphic function. First question is, can you identify can you determine this? And second question is, of course, can you identify omega for a certain number of complex number from this data, can you reconstruct? This is a very practical, practical problem. Okay? Because we can, you can measure, you can measure those uh, those numbers. Yeah? Actually, this is a very, a very exciting problem. For example, uh, then that, for example, 
if it is a square, suppose we have just a square, okay? then what is this measure? I don't know. Uh, square seems very simple, but uh, I don't know what, the, what this uh, measure is. Oh, I wrote it. Uh, M, so this is meromorphic function. Uh, this is also important. Uh, this meromorphic function is a uh, is uh, outside that there's a slit. It is meromorphic. It is holomorphic. And uh, this is a uh, this is essential singularity. The reason is that uh, the, this Norman Poincare operator eigenvalue of the Norman Poincare operator is accumulated to the to the, the zero, so this becomes essential singularity. So this is uh, uh, the question I raised. And then this, uh, use this data to reconstruct uh, uh, reconstruct the finer details. And uh, okay, yes, it's so understanding this measure when boundary has corner. Is a challenging problem. Okay. And there was a paper by Helsing and Perfect, uh, a very recent paper, uh, discussing about this uh, computation of this measure when when omega is a cube. Okay. But this is just a computation. This is the end of the... Now let's talk about the invisibility cloaking. Okay. So far we use the GPT to to see. Now we are going to use GPT to hide. Okay. All right. So suppose uh, conductivity distribution is given by this. Gamma can be, uh, gamma is not a constant, you know. So I have a domain omega. I have domain omega. And its conductivity is gamma. And it's one percent. Okay. And now given field H, given potential H, we solve this one. And uh, this is kind of far field measurement. So using this data, u minus h, far away, we want to detect this guy. OK? Understand? But suppose we can make this one to be 0. Suppose it is completely 0. If the, there is a, uh, without Without this inclusion, without this inclusion, the solution for this problem is just H, right? So U is U minus H being zero means is equivalent to there is to I mean there is a nothing. So it means that the 
omega, omega cannot be seen by this potential or by, by this solution. Now, in general, if you look at this uh, expansion, ux minus hx is O of x. Oh, here it is. Say, in two dimensions, say, minus one. But suppose you can make, uh, make it like uh, x to the minus n for large n. It's hard to see it. Does it make sense? It's hard to see this guy. Okay, so we want to make, I mean, either this or this happens for large n. If the x is large and n is large, then it is become very, very small, right? So we want to make it as small as possible. Okay? And the question is, can we do that? So this is, a, this is annulus. This is a uh, so uh, so one and this is a one a two and so on and we assign uh, conductivity there different conductivity then suppose okay. In the, in the circular case, the asymptotic expansion looks like this. Okay. Now, what do we want to do? So this one is a ah, so it's become too technical. So solution looks like this. Solution. Mn and uh, Rn cosine n theta plus a, uh, a n b n sine n theta. It, in general, solution looks like this. Okay. Now, suppose suppose m one to say m n is zero. Then this summation becomes n goes to n plus 1, right? And this, the leading order term is now r to the 1 over r to the n plus 1. And r is large, then it's very small. So what is the point of this, this invisibility? Make, make all these things, make this thing happen. Okay? Design, design this structure so that these guys are zero. Okay? But the, what is these guys? These guys are GPTs. So kill the GPTs. Then you will get the... So, it, it, of course, this is not a scattering yet. I mean, but the, this is a... What, what is the inverse scattering problem? Inverse scattering problem is detect... I mean, the, the use far field pattern to detect target. But the, the whole point is to make the far field pattern as small as possible. This is the whole point. This is, so it sounds like a stealth. Okay? So the, the, we, the, we make some coating so that the scattering becomes very weak. Okay? All right. So, if the given function is this, one of these, then solution looks like this, and the compute all these solutions, and the design, I mean, don't follow this. It's just to make these things happen, okay? Okay. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, skip. Okay. Ah. 
So, um, in order to make uh, this kind of thing happen, then we we have to find R. Uh, R is say R is given. The, the the thickness of the coating is given, and we, you want to uh, you want to assign the conductivity. But the, the way we assign the conductivity is uh, uh, make this product, and then this product become upper triangular matrix. Okay. It means uh, this corner is zero. And this is uh, for large n. This is a nonlinear algebraic equation, and I don't know. We still couldn't prove the I mean prove that the solution exists. In some spe I mean in some special cases we can prove it, but uh, in general we cannot yet. But uh, for n equal one, two, three, you can solve it by hand. For n equal to one, and it, this is the solution. This is the equation, and this equation has solution. And actually, this one is already known. It's called the neutral inclusion. And this neutral inclusion was first found by Hashin, and this is incorrect. Hashin and Strickman. Okay. You see. It looks like a uniform field. It, it, is, it, it, it has been perturbed, but this is a numerical error. <laughs> so if the, you insert this structure, is, there is a uniform field. You insert this structure, uniform field doesn't perturb at all. It doesn't perturb at all. Okay. And Hashin, uh, found, Hashin and Strickman found this uh, structure, and they used this, uh, this idea to make a Composites. I mean, if you add this and the scale, small scales of this, then a field doesn't perturb at all. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now this is a, a numerical solution of the equation, and uh, so how many layers it has? One, two, three, four, five, six layers. It has six layers, and uh, you can see that the, the polarization, this is 10 to the minus 10. So up to six, the polarization tensor is zero. Okay, okay. now, in 2006, Pandry, in, in science, Pandry and his collaborators and the Leonhardt they, they wrote a paper uh, and the kind of a new, new field has been generated. It's called the transformation optics. And it's, uh, and, uh, let me explain you. Uh, th actually, this is a, uh, okay. So what was the Calderon problem? Calderon problem is use a Dirichlet to Neumann map or Neumann to Dirichlet map to reconstruct sigma. Okay. But there is one obstacle. One obstacle. One obstacle is that the, if the F is a diffeomorphism of omega, which is identity on the boundary, then push, push forward this conductivity, uh, push forward is defined by this, then Dirichlet to Neumann maps are the same. Okay. In 2003, this uh, Greenleaf and Lassas and Gunther Ullmann, they use this transformation to show that the, the uniqueness phase of the, I mean, reconstruction. These two Dirichlet to Neumann maps are the same. So this guy and this guy cannot be distinguished. Okay. But what, what kind of the map this is? This map maps punctured disk to the annulus. So you have a, you have a disk of radius two, and the puncture disk and the blow up, and so that the, the image is this one. And the Dirichlet to Neumann maps, maps are the same. They wrote this paper casually. 
I mean, so, so there is an example that the uniqueness may fail and casual. But in 2006, Pandre and Schoeg and Smith, these people use exactly same transformation to create this transformation optics. Okay? And their idea is, so it is blow up, then Dirichlet to normal maps are the same. So if you put anything inside there, you don't see it. Okay. So they, they wrote, I mean, in 2009, they wrote a, a paper on the Siam Review, which is uh, interesting. So if you're interested in, you look at this. But this is not the end of story. This push forward of identity is a singular. On this part, it becomes singular, infinity. So these people, Korn, Schoen, Bogelius, and Weinstein, they, they propose another don't, don't blow up the point. To, in order to remove the singularity, don't blow up the point. Just to blow up small part to unit disk. Then singularity is removed. Okay? So small part means delta is a, is a conductive this gamma and the delta is outside is one. And then they use this uh, transformation and then they prove that the near cloaking is achieved. Near cloaking means that the, the, the difference of the Dirichlet to Neumann map is uh, of order delta squared in two dimensions. In three dimensions delta cube. Okay? And uh, it explains why their argument works, but uh, let me skip this. Now, our idea is if the before transformation, before blowing up, coat, coat this uh, uh, coat this uh, small part by make a multi coat of this, so that the GPT becomes zero, up to a certain order, and then blow up. Then what happens is that the near cloaking effect is enhanced like that. It's a dramatic enhancement. Okay. So this is all computation about this, but the, so the enhancement is uh, so as you can see, this delta to the two n. Okay? So dramatic enhancement is achieved. So this uh, this paper is uh, was published this year, I think. Yeah. And this is a scattering case. This is a this is actually scattering. This is a con con and these people's. Uh, uh, cloaking, near cloaking, and this is, uh, you coat it, just one, one, make one coating, and then, okay. you see, this is a total field. So it looks like uh, there is a total field, it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't perturb, and this is scattered field, this is total field, and scattered field, so it's, uh, it works. And this idea has been generalized to the Helmholtz equation and the Maxwell equation, and also this U, U the student here, the, the, the computation. Okay. Now, so GPT vanishing structure, we just discussed, is a circular. This is circular or spherical. Okay. 
and it is a challenging problem to construct a GVT vanishing structure of order one or higher of arbitrary shape. Okay. okay. So the problem is that the, uh, given a core, so core is given. Now you coat it, coat it, omega, so that the polarization tensor becomes zero. Okay. Can you construct it? Actually, I just mentioned this, uh, this uh, Fung, the student of, at Ina University, made uh, big progress on this, uh, this problem. But uh, let me tell you, neutral inclusion, so, so for example, can you coat? Can you coat arbitrary shape domain so that the field outside is not perturbed at all? If it is a single field, it's possible. But the two field, say, this one, this one field and the second field, if the this structure is uh, neutral to two field in two dimensions, then this is a concentric disk. So, which means that you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You cannot make a, make a coating so that the coated structure become neutral to two field. You cannot do that. It's impossible. But uh, remember that the, our, uh, our structure is not the neutral. It's just a polarization tensor becomes zero. Okay. First order polarization tensor, second order polarization tensor, these tensors are zero. Okay. So it, we cannot kill all the scattering, but we want, to, we want to make the scattering as small as possible. Okay, okay. so now let's discuss about this. Uh, a normal local resonance. Before that, I want to show you uh, one uh, video. Hey. Question? Uh, oh, oh. Hold on, hold on. Oh, no. Play? Yeah. Play? Yeah. Oh, do you got? You go? Yeah. <laughs> so Starship Enterprise is approaching to to the station. Okay, what's uh Okay, so this is just a, one radius. Structure is this one. Okay. This is a structure. And uh, so Starship is uh, approaching to the station. And uh, it, it, I'll, I'll repeat it again, but if the, these, the, 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 these points are inside the circle, then it disappears. Look at this. So you can see it, right? You can see the starships. Now, if the, it enters this, the, 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 this radius, what happened? Disappeared, right? It comes out. And the outside radius is, it shows up again. Okay. One more time. <laughs> What was the What was the name of 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 the
So many things can be observed from this uh, uh, video. So as it approaches, resonance occurs. This is called anomalous resonance. Okay? Anomalous resonance. And anomalous localized resonance in the sense that the, the resonance occurs on the interface. Okay. Actually, this is not made by me. It's uh, Milton and the Nikrovich made this video clip. And uh, Milton visited Seoul National in 2006 and he showed us this figure and challenged us with the, whether we can prove, I mean, we can rigorously prove this, uh, this thing happens. So Starship is cloaked, invisible, if it is inside this radius, okay? So what is this structure? What is this structure? This structure is now, it's called plasmon. So this structure is this one. I have a core whose conductivity is one, say. Now I have coating whose conductivity is minus one plus I delta. Okay. And I have the medium whose conductivity is one. Okay. Now, there is a source, dipole source, say, okay. and if the dip there is a certain radius, if the dipole source is outside of the radius, then it can be seen, and if the this source is inside the radius, you cannot see it. Okay. The body of dielectrical material is coated by plasmonic structure of negative dielectric constant with zero low, I mean non-zero loss parameter. Loss parameter is delta there. Then anomalous localized resonance may occur and the source outside the structure may be cloaked as the loss parameter tends to zero. So as delta goes to zero, what happens is the, our analysis. This, so cloaking this, so this is called the cloaking by the, the anomalous localized resonance, and this is exterior cloaking. Okay. The structure is this. One minus one plus I delta, and one outside. And this is called the plasmonic structures. Okay. And now the question is, what happens if delta goes to zero? An interesting thing is that the or in, in previous analysis, what was the what was the point? Epsilon uh, C minus epsilon M and two times is plus epsilon C minus epsilon M minus Poincare Neumann operator. This was the main operator, right? Now here, epsilon c is one. Uh, let's do it this way. Epsilon, epsilon c is minus one plus i delta. This is one. And this is uh, minus one plus i delta. And this is minus one. Okay, look at this. One one cancels out. So as delta goes to zero, this number goes to zero. The zero is the <coughs> essential singularity of the normal Poincare operator. See? It's like, or the, this normal Poincare operator has a spectrum here, and this it is approaching to this point, right? 
So because the eigenvalue is approaching to the, the, the essential singularity of the Poincaré Neumann operator, this strange thing happens. Okay. So that's why it is, I mean, we are looking at the spectrum of this uh, Poincaré Neumann operator. Maybe taking break. Debbie, any, any question? Oh.